So I've been looking for an Athlon XP motherboard. I actually purchased one on eBay. I don't think I've got any photos of it. Um, it was an Epox uh, Enforce 2 uh, 400 Ultra, I think. Um, unfortunately, while the board worked um, and had mostly been recapped, a couple of the caps came that were already bulging. And while it worked, it, uh, it did have some issues with um, rebooting, basically. Uh, it would uh, not power back on sometimes after using it. Um, so the guy shipped me a replacement board, which is this Albatron uh, board here. Uh, you can see the model number there. Sorry, it's going to zoom out a bit. Uh, which looks like quite a nice board. I, um, I've had a quick look at the caps and all looked good, but I have just noticed it's got, unfortunately, some... And so, let's see if I can zoom in. This cap here doesn't look great. And one of the other caps, uh, where am I? Just there doesn't look great. It actually looks quite strange. Um, I've not seen that before. I am assuming though that that is capacitor leakage, unfortunately. Those are the only two caps that seem to be doing that so I think that is fixable but it is nominally tested so I'm going to give it a shot today. Um, it's got a Athlon XP 3000 plus in it um, and it's another Enforce 2 board so quite a nice one. Uh, so I'm just gonna take off this is the uh, P4 that I've been using um, the Willamette 423 uh, which has been a really reliable board actually. I think this must have been made just before the capacitor plague because all the caps were original, but this one has been incredibly stable and um, really trouble free, which I didn't expect from a 423 board. Anyway, so I've got my uh, lovely AG, uh, ATX um, bench top here which I love, it makes everything easy. I just need to move this power around because the motherboard has it in a different spot. Uh, it's really good, it wasn't cheap, but uh, definitely makes it uh, really easy to test ATX boards. Unfortunately it doesn't seem to fit AT boards very well, um, but I've got it set up with all of the ATX holes and it, everything always fits very nicely and I've got a couple of sp spots for the um, video and network if I need. Um, oh, this is an interesting slides back and forth. Actually that's almost, might be hard to get to but almost better than the, uh, the other ones. Uh, let's slide that. So I need to grab a heat sink. A touch, a very small amount of thermal paste. These, uh, unfortunately, you can crack these CPUs quite easily because they've got a bare die. But uh, you can see that. So this is quite a cheap. I suppose, look, this is the thing I have, have the most problems with: is finding um, uh, heat sinks and stuff for computers and cases. I don't know uh, for motherboards. I don't know why it's so complicated. Anyway, it's got a little rivet there. So that will go to this side. Just give it a wiggle first to move that thermal paste around. And then this is the fun part. We need a screwdriver. Oh, well, that was fun. The fun parts about this, these uh, don't like them at all. That is not. Yeah, I've got it on. Cool. Let's hope that's all good. I don't think there should be any problems with that. CPU fan. Uh, no onboard videos, so. I'll just use this uh, TNT2 
for now. So that's working. Ah, oh, that's actually up one higher than this. So I'll move this standoff. Not that you really need it when you're testing. I'm just going to power this board on quickly first now to see if it works. Um, actually I'm just going to leave that out entirely. Um, okay, so then we need to plug in the power. Now, it's interesting, I was doing a bit of research on Inforce 2. Oh, wow, this is a bad design. Let me show you. I just don't understand why that would be right there next to the... That's dumb. I'm just gonna try and get that on without breaking it off. Oh, what the hell? This power supply must have a very wide connector. Jeez, that is a bad board design. I might have to just check what other power supplies I have. I have never seen that before. I just can't understand why you would... It's an instant fail for me in terms of... And the other thing I was going to say, the um, a lot of these boards just run off the um, normal ATX power, but some of the other ones have the 12 volt rail, which is meant to be a lot better because the CPU draws the power off that rail. And so a lot of new mother power supplies don't have a very high powered five volt rail. So having a, um, the extra uh, PM4 style four pin power adapter is uh, preferable. This board doesn't have it. And I think the Epox one I had didn't have it either. Um, I'm gonna have to try and find a new power supply. I don't know if I've got anything else spare here. So I might leave this and come back once I've found power supply. Alright, I wasn't able to find another power supply very quickly, but I found this, uh, ex oh, actually, you know what, I don't think this is going to work. This is actually a 24 pin, and I am sure. <laughs> okay, this is totally unexpected. Um, not that I'm sure it's going to work, but let me bring this back over. Sorry for all the... So while it goes in, the actual connection is off to the side, again, where I don't want it. Um, but it looks a little smaller. I might see if I can get that in. Wow, what a nightmare this motherboard is. No, it's just pushing up too close to that component. All right, uh, leave it there and I'll do some power supply hunting. All right, I found this um, power supply out of a similar age Pentium 4. I actually thought it was going to be really crappy, but it is an AOPEN branded one and it does 25 amps on the 5 volt, 5 volt rail. So it actually should be pretty good and it's quite heavy. So. I think this sh should do it. It's seriously dusty, but that's okay. Um, it actually came out of this P4, which I was using for the retro LAN that worked up until the very last moment and started corrupting things on the hard disk. Uh, I kind of expected it because it has got a couple of caps. So this one here is, whoops, excuse me. That one there is bulging and it's dirty as. Um, there's another cap I think I saw somewhere that looked a bit dodgy. This one down here is uh, a little bulgy. Um, but otherwise most of the caps look okay. The um, board's just an Intel, pretty basic Intel board. But this one's a 1.7 gig Willamate um, 475 uh, CPU. So I actually wanted to do some testing with this board eventually with the... Uh, 423 P4 I've got. Um, I think this is DDR RAM, I'd expect. So, not a direct comparison, but 
we'll get there. It wasn't reliable up until the hard drive started corrupting, so I don't know if maybe the hard drive has got issues, but I don't think so. I'm pretty sure it's a uh, cap issue. All right, so I'm just going to... Um, how am I going to do this? I think I'll just have it set up to the side. Might be a bad idea. Let's see if we get any smoke. So I really need to give everything a good clean. It's all very dusty. Okay, so this looks like it should fit. Yes, it fits perfectly. How stupid a design is that? Okay, so plug in VGA and I need USB for keyboard. And I've got a still I've got a serial mouse here. I use for everything. Serial mouse are really hard to find, but I've been using a serial mouse because a lot of my 486s don't have PS2. Um, so that's good. All right, so we've got the CPU. Now I need to find where the power on switch, hard drive light reset switch power is there. Okay, I kind of not that confident with this one. All right, it's plugged in, no smoke, and I did get a little red light. Uh, where did it go? Just uh, over here. So, oh, I should turn on the screen recording. Go to start recording. And then, look at old screwdriver. Okay. Okay, we've got a post. Oh, excellent, excellent. Um, I obviously haven't got a PC speaker. Let's go into the BIOS. And quickly check the temperature of... Oh, the BIOS is quite cool. Okay, so it says CPU temperature is currently 20 degrees. Okay, V-Core at 1.6. 3.3 .3 at 3.3, .3, just about. 5 is a little low, that's okay. 12 is a little low. It refreshes quite fast, actually. Oh, I like it's got the battery voltage, so that's low. The battery's a bit low. The five volt. Yeah, this is actually this is pretty cool. This um, this BIOS has a lot of options. In it. It's got three gig of RAM, which is total overkill. CPU speed detected. I don't remember. Yes, that probably sounds right. I think I had a. 3500 plus, which was 1.8 gig. Um, oh, you can configure everything. DDR voltage, chipset voltage, crazy. This board has so many options. The uh, fan on the GPU cooler is spinning. All right, well, it seems to be working. The CPU is getting up to 26, that's all right. 27, that's slowly increasing, but I don't think this uh, heat sink and fan is particularly impressive. Um, cool. Well, it hasn't blown up yet. I don't... not sure about those two caps. It's, it's weird. I haven't seen leakage look like that, but I suspect it may have dried. I really should replace it, but I'm not going to at the moment. I am going to test it in Windows 98. Actually, no. I shouldn't use 98. Oh, I was using 98 on the other one, the Epox board, I think. I, look, I might try 98 first, but really, probably this is more an XP era. XP era build, uh, which is the goal, basically. Um, okay, cool. Uh, let's leave it there, and I'll keep, uh, keep testing it. I just noticed something on this motherboard that interests me. Uh... This thing here called a voice genie, and it's in English, Chinese, Japanese, and German. So I'm assuming this reads out the, uh, um, I don't know, temperature or error codes or something like that. So I've hooked up a old PC speaker. Just turn it on and see if it says anything. Um,
shouldn't say anything there. And that's quite a onboard record. Ah, voice tuning. I found it in the BIOS. This option allows you to enable or disable the diagnostic function. Okay, but how do we actually run it? I'm assuming that it just says if there's an error, basically. So what I might do is I might take out the RAM and see if that oh. take out the RAM and see if that does anything it's weird these boards all have three memory slots I would have thought they would have had two or four, but the Enforce ones, the few I've had, these ones all have three. Okay, no RAM, let's see what happens. What's it saying? Your memory may have a problem. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Just trying to turn it off, but it is not wanting to switch off. Alright, well why don't we try uh, German, which is off, off, so switch one and two. Let's see what it sounds like in German. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but I'm assuming something similar. Turning it off is proving to be annoying with this screwdriver. I might just unplug it. Anyway, that's a very interesting little feature.